trilogy is in, in advance. I'm not at 100% right now, so I try to. So I'm sorry, it's, the presentation is not good as it should be. Um, so I work at Stanford Research Computing um, uh, as an HPC system administrator. And uh, my talk is about um, two main pro ongoing projects. So um, the Oak project, so the chip and deep storage system. Uh, and the second part of my presentation will um, cover um, a Google Drive copy tool that we developed. And uh, I will explain how we did that and uh, the experimentation results. So uh, first, Stanford, uh, if you don't know, if, if it's, it's one of the world leading research uh, universities in the US, in California. It has more than 2,000 faculty members, uh, more than 5,000 uh, externally sponsored research projects, so having external grants. And there, there are uh, seven schools. So we are at Research Computing cover all seven schools. Um, um, a few years ago, um, uh, we created, uh, so the, the Stanford Research Computing Center, SRCC, was created uh, with a building on Slack campus. So Slack is a DOE national lab uh, operated by Stanford University. And um, uh, it's a brand new building, uh, very energy efficient, uh, designed for HPC, for only research. Uh, and uh, cooled by ambient air, air fan systems uh, for 90% of the year. So we, we have three service models here hosting, so researchers can just put their servers there if they are then dense enough. Uh, supported clusters and servers that we provide help and administration, but we don't design. And also, um, the last one is the shared computing resources um, that we focus here. So. Um, we have two main shared resources available at Stanford, so Sherlock and FarmShare. Sherlock is uh, an HPC cluster available to all sponsored research, uh, all, all, uh, yeah, all researchers doing sponsored research, so having external grants. So usually not students, but in some cases they work in a lab that, that is sponsored. So. Um, we have uh, 1,800 users. Um, it's, it's not a, um, a chart pack model, it's a condo cluster. So that's common in US university. Uh, you, we, 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 provide, we bootstrap the cluster, we, we, we buy 100 nodes, um, we provide administration, uh, uh, software, uh, support, and uh, PI, so faculty member can invest in Sherlock and buy nodes. And currently, we, we, we maxed out the current IP fabric, so we are starting the second, second fabric. Uh, it has been a great success. Um, it has two main storage uh, spaces, so an Isilon for home directory with snapshot, full features, small capacity, uh, very scalable. And Luster, uh, Luster Scratch system uh, that is now accessible through uh, Luster Waters. So with the Luster Enterprise uh, Edition, it has three petabytes. It's, it's, um, it grow, it's going to, it, we, we use the same kind of model for storage. And also we have, uh, but you see, we, have, we don't have any long-term storage here uh, on Sherlock. Um, capacity concept storage. And we have FarmShare, which is another compute environment, um, which is um, open to students, uh, written for coursework, also, research related project for people starting in computing. We have a lot of people new and that don't know how to use HPC cluster. So, usually they are starting on FarmShare, and some not are even not um, uh, using schedule, a scheduler, so it's not shared resources. So, we have uh, a AFS, uh, iZilon, and, and, uh, and a large ZFS on Linux running on FarmShare. Um, we also have, uh, support some computing and storage resources that, uh, that from other groups or PIs that we, do, we don't design directly. Uh, so we have a, a Cray GPU cluster, a CS term, one petaflop uh, power, compute power of, of, of GPUs. Uh, so it's a, it's a set of PIs that uh, got a warning with a MR, NFS MRI, MRI grants. 
and 20% uh, of this cluster is made available to XSEED. So we have a, a Luster Summation appliance uh, connected to it, a scratch, my workspace, uh, not purge, uh, but uh, sensing, not longer cap very capacitive storage here. We also have a dynamic cluster that we support SCG, a 4.4, which has a 4.4 petabyte of GPFS, it's a DDN grid scaler. Uh, we also have um, a VDI base uh, on KVM and CEPH with ZFS on Linux backend storage for the Stanford Neuroscience Institute. And uh, many other smaller systems. So, um, we are our researchers have a clear need of a more capacity-oriented, long-term storage space. And very importantly, with immediate access to their data. Uh, not in the different high-duty cycle like Scratch, uh, workload, uh, but um, yeah, more to store data for the long term. Uh, it, it, it has to be easily accessible from anywhere, so even possibly from desktop, from other clusters that are not um, uh, luster native, uh, so the end, very cheap. So you know, researcher coming with uh, price, hard, hard drive, price from hard drive um, at fries. So fries in the US is like that, that. Before here in France it was surcouf. So you you find great deal with a uh, hard drive. So they come and they want the, the same price for a luster artist. So it's a challenge. Um, the typical use case for such a system will be um, like Los Alamos called HPC campaign storage, uh, I like to call that the project storage, it's for the duration of research project. You can store your data and uh, you have a lot of space, easily accessible. Uh, and also we have another um, uh, use case that um, a, a, a faculty member has microscope and uh, produce terabytes of data per week and, and would like to easily access uh, uh, um, its data uh, on Sherlock, for example. But also on, on desktops, uh, even smart, smartphones, maybe. You can have Jupyter on smartphone and, and access your results while you are traveling. And, uh, so. so the specifications of this uh, storage system uh, can be summarized, I think, in four points. So affordability, it has to be cheap. So cheap, uh, we have defined cheap as less than $100 per, per terabyte. Uh, acquisition, acquisition cost. So usually for three years, just less than 33 terabytes per terabyte per year. 30, 33 dollars per terabyte per year. And it has to fit the condo model. Same thing, we don't have a, a new, uh, budget, uh, only faculty members have the, uh, big money. So we will start with a prototype and, and, and put it in production and then uh, offer the possibility of PI to buy hardware. So, so to allow a, a, a wide range of faculty members to invest. Uh, we, the, the, we have some constraints was, yeah, that are specific to the condo model. So the base expansion unit has to be um, affordable. Uh, uh, yeah. So also, in terms of scalability, it has to scale in, ter uh, in terms of volume with no extension limits. Uh, uh, so we, have, we should be able to sm start small, grow often, so every month, and scale to petabytes, uh, tens of petabytes. Uh, third constant is diversity of, of access protocols, uh, because uh, it has to enable standard, standard HPC users, but also uh, the growing number of what we call long tail of science users um, that are not uh, from the HPC world. Um, I'm thinking of machine learning, deep learning, those big data stuff. And uh, the, the last point is manageability. Uh, we, have, we are a small team, so we have to be smart how to design that to avoid uh, uh, problem afterwards. So the challenge, you see that low price per TV, uh, it's an affordable increments. Uh, it's by definition, it's contrary, contradictory goals. So, also, the problems uh, with most vendor solution in our case, uh, it's often not easy expandable, if at all. 
And if you say yes, have you tried yourself? Because uh, I tried. <laughs> and um, usually it's expensive initial investment, uh, especially when uh, the, the vendor is using uh, and only proposing ultra dense disk arrays. Uh, it's, it's a steep price for extension in that case. And also another thing that uh, we had a problem with is close source management software. So when you are on the troubleshooting and, and, and you know, with having no source to fix the issue uh, on site, uh, so that's a no-go now. So this is OAK, introducing OAK, uh, one of the kinds of HTTP system. We have several acronyms. Um, so the main driver are multiple expansion units, as I say, minimal infrastructure, structure, affordable hardware components, maximum performance with given hardware. Solution, uh, so a global stuff file system at SRCC uh, with multi-protocol gateways and open source management software only. So the main idea of uh, the um, uh, OAK, uh, so we had still focused cheap. So uh, we, we mainly worked on the IO cells uh, and not a lot on the MD cells. So, so the, the <gasps> main driver, the main most importantly, we have to maximize the number of disks that we buy per server because servers are expensive, CPU are expensive, memory is expensive. So we, we, we also uh, plan to use a cheap mid-size keyboard uh, targeted for the cloud market. So not ultra-dense, high-cost high uh, uh, keyboard. And the design has to fit the combo model, grow without downtime, downtime of course, and still be highly available. The MD cell uh, should be just extensible, but with DNA available now, we are, it's, it's more, we are more flexible for, in terms of design. So we plan to, to use yeah, a traditional MDS and, and rented arrays. Um, so, as I said, we will use a mid size keyboard targeted for the cloud market. So, 60, 60 disks have been a great price point, and also it's uh, easy. Um, you can easily build the 10 disk red volumes with it. Uh, the ID now, uh, of the ISL is to use SAS switches, so to link servers and disk array. So that way we can connect more disks to less servers, so it's cheaper. Keep number of required servers minimal, less license, licenses. And, and SAS, of course, I would like to say it's, it, it's cheaper than fiber channel, maybe it, that remain you or like yourself is uh, or SAS switch, uh, fiber switches, so SAS is, is a lot cheaper. And um, we opt, we decided to go with dual switch, uh, dual switch setup uh, for easy, easy, uh, easy redundancy. Uh, SAS multipassing. We don't need to touch existing servers uh, to grow. So if we need more space, we plug a new Gboard. If we need more performance, we plug a new server. And you can smart with just one GBUD. So um, this is a, an overview of the cell design. So the M to uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the diagram um, uh, the MD uh, the MD cells. So um, we we have regular um, uh, red arrays to uh, two MDS uh, connected two controller and just a few storage that we can expand. We can also add MDSs, add MDT, and uh, if needed, add another MD set. So we are fine. It's not the main focus here. The IO cell is, um, um, consists in, in the startup IO cell consists in two, two OSSs so with two SAS switches and one GBOD. And we, we, we then can ex expand the number of GBOD up to eight. And if needed, add another server uh, for more performance. And those IO cells, we will interconnect them uh, with Infinitum because uh, as we have only few servers, uh, uh, few ports are required, and in that case, Infinitum is very cheap uh, and uh, very efficient, and it will allow for infinite expansion. Even if you fill up the switch, we can expand the fabric uh, with a larger switch or more switches. And um, so with this system, we plan to use uh, MD-RED with LDSC FS because it's cheaper than hardware RAID, it's free. Uh, RAID 6 performance with Haswell, Intel Haswell processor are, is extremely efficient uh, due to AVX2. So it's 
so it's fully hardware uh, uh, optimized. And the memory management uh, is very uh, efficient too. It's not memory angry at all. So you can even tune it and set up the subscribe cache size dynamically uh, if you have an issue. We can still pro uh, um, um, perform periodic background data check. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that uh, Dominic presented yesterday the file checker of Robinhood. We can add that on top of, of that um, uh, to, to check the uh, data coherence. And we have features like exist for a long time, like uh, multi-mode protection that like we, we love. Um, so that's the plan. Still, the design allows to use uh, CFS on Linux afterwards, if needed. So the MD cell, I will be quickly over it. It's traditional MD cell, so two Dell servers uh, with uh, a single IP port, um, uh, MD array with uh, cheap disks uh, and this array has snapshot support for disaster recovery and uh, that's it, nothing fancy here. Uh, the ISL is uh, more interesting. Uh, we have two OSSs, uh, so as well processors with 256 gig of RAM, two HBA, uh, the dual port SAS 3, uh, one in Figibon, and two SAS switches, so external SAS switches that are from Aztec, uh, based on LSI expander chip, SAS expander chip, Rackable, redundant power supply, management port, SNMP support, uh, so nice and cheap. Um, uh, for the GBOD, uh, we choose uh, Quanta, so Q QCT, uh, they are very cheap. Uh, fully redundant to uh, multiple uh, SIM, interf uh, SIM modules uh, with, uh, based on LSI expander chips too. So it's uh, from the HPA through the, through the expander of the switch and the expander inside the GBOD. We are all using Avago uh, Avago chip to make it very, uh, it's better for the compatibility. And uh, for the drive, uh, so we are not using SATA drive, it's not dirt cheap, I would say, but we have still some redundancy, so, um, and the, the SAS drive, the enterprise, so from Seagate to hard drive, so not the high end, but not the SATA drive neither, uh, we found that very, very, it's a very good deal, I would say. Um, uh, so we choose the Macara Plus, the ATB, uh, PNR drive, SAS uh, 12 gig, SAS, so two pass, five year warranties. And the performance in, in read is two, 200 megabytes per second, so it's, it's fine. So the, this is an overview of the IOCell of Oak, two servers, two SAS switch, eight GBOTs uh, in one rack. And what we experimented is that uh, the SAS protocol allow, allow um, fancy stuff. So, in, with SAS, you have a fee, so physical lane, and a, a SAS ports. Uh, and in, in one port, uh, so port is kind of the logical access uh, to the drive. Uh, in one port, you can um, set up up to eight feet uh, to increase the bandwidth. And you can even do that dynamically. So it's very great. Uh, and um, so we're using two cables from the server to the switch you can create uh, white ports uh, of uh, 96 gigabit per gigabit per second. And um, so we have um, uh, an IO cell with a backend bandwidth of 48 gigabyte per second, per second with a blocking factor of 2.1, um, because the, yeah, the switches are, there are two more ports connected to the GBOT than the servers. And uh, we found out that it's a very good match with the MD Red 6 algorithm, uh, which allow, uh, with an as well processor that we have, uh, we were able to reach uh, during initial benchmark, in memory benchmark, 22 gigabytes per second per server. So that's the maximum RAID performance you can get in one server. So 44 gig per second max. So the backend is well designed. It's enough to reach a maximum RAID. And we still have a redundant pass to each SAS drive. So the other equipment we, we, we have on Oak is gateways. So gateways are hyper, KVM hypervisor using SRIOV. 
uh, on both 10 gig and IB, and then we, we can spawn VM and um, uh, install SMB, uh, to VM having cluster clients, and uh, spawn SMB services, NFS, uh, Globus, uh, on cloud, on cloud uh, Jupyter, and all these uh, services to have an access to, to the data. Um, and the Robinhood server, we haven't forget it. Uh, so that's the only part that is actually uh, using SSD. Uh, uh, and we choose a, a, a CPU with high frequency because we think it's better uh, in terms of performance. Um, that's the global archi architecture. So at the, at the, in the left, you have the, the clusters that are a less than that native. Uh, so they, are, they will have a luster rotors. Uh, for example, Sherlock, uh, Xtreme, the Clay, the Clay CSTorm. Also, we have an army, army cluster named Kratos that is running cluster to five, so that will be fine. And we have uh, in the bottom right the other uh, clusters like uh, uh, SCG, we could mount uh, OAK to NFS, uh, or just we could have everything in place to transfer data. And also, we have the user run with all the gateway ac ac access to Oak, uh, like Globus, WebDAV. Uh, uh, it really depends on, on, on the needs of the researchers. So, this is a rack layout. Uh, so, uh, the left rack is uh, MD, uh, MD cells plus gateways, uh, administration, administration nodes, Robinhood server. And um, uh, the, you see that uh, at the, at, in the right you have the IO cells and it feel, fit well one per rack. Uh, so AG bots, uh, two SAS switch, switches, and two or three servers. Um, and at the end, we have a predictable hardware cost. Um, uh, we, we, made, made, we, do, we did the math, and uh, you, you can see that um, when we will. We will finish the first IO cell, when we have 8 g we will be below our uh, target price, and uh, way below actually. And um, you can see a, a bump at the uh, uh, G-Bot number 9, you have a bump in price because we have to buy a rack, uh, two SAS switches, and two additional servers. But yeah, we have a, at the end, we will have a, a price uh, below 80. Uh, $80 per TB for acquisition, that means less than $30, TB per t uh, 30 per TB per year. Uh, not including people uh, and <laughs> price. Okay, just hardware. Uh, so, yeah, I, I added this slide uh, because the Lester based solution for cheap storage system is not common because the Lester is used by big labs and uh, it's usually expensive systems. And um, so this system aims to demonstrate that the cluster-based storage system can be used for very affordable uh, storage uh, system when you use with uh, software software RAID uh, and uh, yeah, commodity hardware. Um, uh, we made a, a simple comparison, so maybe it's not very fair and right because um, the I made a comparison with Ceph. Ceph requires one gigabyte of RAM per TB of storage. It's in the spec. Um, Oak will work with 136 megabytes of RAM per TB, so it's almost 10 times less memory. Um, same, same thing for the number of, of CPU sockets required. Um, we, 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 Oak will have 120 disks per CPU socket. A regular Ceph cluster needs uh, usually small node pizza boxes with one or two CPU sockets and, and, and 15 disk, I would say. So, for example, Yahoo had half sets clusters. Each of, each of the, those clusters has 54 nodes uh, for a total capacity of 3.2 petabytes. That's almost the same at, at, as an oak, but it's, it's, at the end, it's 7.5 disk per CPU socket. So, you have, a, you have a, I'm sorry to say, the Intel tap. Right? Um, so, so, yeah, so that's. We hope to, to achieve a full IO cell with this amount of RAM. It should work if, if 
if it's not enough, we have possibility to add some memory or add another server. It's still, the like is still flexible. Um, so is Lustre the perfect solution for cheap and deep? I would say no, because there is one big problem with Lustre, it's manageability and the administration complexity uh, is a no-go for many, many, many users. I'm on a mailing list from university across the US and they are talking about cheap and deep storage all the time. None of them are talking about Lustre. We are probably the only one talking about cheap and deep storage with Lustre. And that's too bad because Lustre it should, it's great. It's very efficient and it's, uh, well, I wanted to say that. So, so the software components of Oak, uh, so we will be based on CentOS 7.2, the cluster management in XCAT. Luster, we will uh, probably go, uh, we hope, with Intel Foundation Edition, so for education. Uh, so 2.7 or maybe 2.8, uh, 2.9, uh, this is to be done. Uh, for Luster, we will use Shine, uh, that uh, was developed at CA, uh, used by other vendors, um, uh, so the master branch, and of course, probably not, this week for FS monitoring. Uh, we are we are to develop um, just one tool um, was missing. Uh, it's manage when managing complex SaaS backend. Uh, there is no open source tool available, and all this information is available uh, through CFS on Linux. But it's uh, usually you write homemade scripts. Uh, so so I started uh, this project. Uh, it's available on GitHub. It's still a, a work in progress, so um, uh, it's not finished. But it, it, it's a, you have only a few uh, simple tools to show the SAS topology or the expanders, the, SAS, uh, the, the number of lanes between uh, the expanders and the different components. And it supports um, enclosure nickname that it was added in SCS2. That's very convenient. You can name all your SAS components and got information. For administration, that's very, very great. Uh, for Shine, we just want to add, add hooks in Shine to assemble, assemble and stop MDRAs on target startups, so that should be easy. Um, that will be a collaboration with, uh, with OEM and CA for, to, to try to add uh, this, those features into the main uh, master branch. Um, also, we, so that's Shine related, but uh, we don't want to use pacemaker for, for HA because uh, who, who of you have already used pacemaker with Luster and never got any issue with the pacemaker? <laughs> one? Ne never one issue? Timeout issue? Let me talk about the software or this one? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. So, yeah, we all have to increase the timeout or uh, things like that, and uh, it's very complex to set up. There was a, a, a nice article in Admin Magazine, I think, one year ago, about how to get rid of pacemaker. Uh, so, we want uh, to have another way to just have a, a way to fail, fail over the target it, if it's really needed, if you really we have a, a hardware failure, which is quite true. Uh, so, so we, yeah, I mean, I have no time, I have to talk about the Google Drive copy tool. So that's my second part. <laughs> Why Google Drive? So Google Drive, um, it's a file storage uh, created by Google, a cloud-based storage. It has an API uh, and uh, it's free and unlimited for education. So all schools uh, in the US and in Europe too, I guess, uh, can apply and get free unlimited storage uh, with individual file size up to 5 TB, so it's, uh, it's interesting. So free is always better, so we, we started to work on that project to see how it behaves. So first of all, so, um, we needed a new Luster HSM agent um, to be able to push data to uh, Google Drive and Henry, for those that were at the Robinhood user group, uh, uh, Henry uh, uh, introduced uh, LHSM tool CMD uh, copy tool, uh, which is included with Robinhood V3 uh, in tools, I guess, uh, in Robinhood tools RPM. So, 
and uh, it comes with all the cluster HSM magic, but, not, but, but delegate the copy uh, to subcommands. And it uses a, a really smart way to, uh, to well, a simple basic Unix concept. It's to, to the child command inherits the parent file descriptors, and which is very important for cloud API libraries, it passes up a seekable file descriptor because all, almost all cloud API library has retries uh, implemented and you need a seekable file descriptor. You cannot pipe data to it or it's not very not efficient. And we, we report progress, so to the coordinator, uh, the parent, so LHSM to CMD report progress, the current progress by sneaking into current size position because in, in, in Unix, when um, you have a file descriptor, you, the file uh, position, the current position is called also share. So that's interesting. I, I, I like that. So development is open, yeah, it's open source, uh, created by Henri. Uh, uh, so thank you, Chairman. Um, and it's running at Stanford now for more than six months. And we have, we have we provided uh, some patch to so contribute. Um, so, as a subcommand, we use a Google Drive copy tool that we developed. Uh, at first, we used uh, the Google Drive CLI that already existed, but the overhead was too high because they are doing plen plenty of stuff with pass and we don't need that. We, we just need a copy tool that puts uh, data to uh, Google Drive and just put the feed as a name. That's all. So, it's very simple. It uses the Google API client library in Python. It uses the field as a name, it implements a, a, yeah, a backup, expo exponential backup strategy on top of that to be more robust. And it's very easy. You define ar an archive and a restore command, uh, and it's compatible uh, with yeah, LHS and tool CNT. And it's available open source, so you can try the there are instruction on, on, on the on the on GitHub. So um, we migrated more than two petabytes in Google Drive. Uh, so we started uh, six months ago um, with um, uh, uh, here. Uh, this is a bandwidth uh, uh, in the negative here. Uh, we started with a tool named Otiki uh, uh, Drive, a CLI tool. Uh, uh, and uh, the performance was not uh, so great, so then we Develop C CTG drive, and we max out a 10 gig, 10 gig link of, of Stanford. So now they just added the second one just for me, and and um, yeah. So that's big files. So we were able to push a lot of data here. We had several, we made several, we, we did several campaign of, of migration with Robinhood, with Robinhood v3, um, and that uh, here you can see that we try to transfer small files. So we, we try um, to archive Sherlock, I forgot to say, uh, Sherlock Scratch. So on, on Sherlock Scratch, we have 530 million inodes and about two petabytes. So small files, and here uh, we have a lot of new and modified uh, big files here. So we, this is another campaign, and we reach the two, two petabytes uh, in Google Drive in just one account. Um, so this is the Grafana uh, graph of, from Robinhood that we use. So we see, you can see uh, the synchronized volume. Uh, uh, so we, uh, in Luster here, uh, synchronized in Google Drive. So we have 1.5 petabytes of files right now that are in both in Luster and in Google Drive. Uh, but uh, so I'm going to two petabytes, but because they are modified files. Um, and we migrated to uh, 12 million inodes only to, to Google Drive. So to finish, um, uh, we found out that uh, we have Google Drive has interesting features, file versioning. When you push uh, an update of a, of a modified drive, a file on Google Drive, um, you have versions that Google Drive keep at least 30 days. But there, are, there, are, there is no support of file versioning in Luster yet. But it's interesting. You can still find a, a, a previous version. You can search by description. So that's and it's Google. It's scale. It's really immediate. We put we put the original file path in the file description. So if you search 
in Google Drive in the Wave interface just a file name. You will find all the feeds that match, and that's very great. But the main limitation is small files because it's free. There are some limitations, and the query per second per account is very low, uh, especially for writes. So it's limited by three per second. And so it's not. It's it's a big deal for small files. We can't migrate 500 million sign up in, re in the reasonable time. And also, uh, we had an issue with uh, Lustre HS and Max request. It doesn't play away with QPS limits. Uh, so, because we have to adapt Max request depending on my, if you migrate small files or big files. So, for us, it would be nice to have a Max request per second. Uh, but there have been discussions, and especially uh, we had a lunch with Robert Reed and at Stanford. And, yeah, I think he wants to have a, a user space process doing that. It's a good idea. We cannot put everything in the coordinator in kernel space. It wouldn't make sense. But it's how to make it, uh, I don't know. Uh, so the next step for us is to surface the user accounts to get rid of this limitation. There is a special uh, directory in Google Drive API that you can store hidden files in each user account. And uh, also play with other cloud storage because some PIs, some faculty members have, 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 have credits uh, in Amazon in S3 that could be interesting too. Uh, and that's the archi ar future archi architecture of Oak uh, with the HSM to the cloud. Uh, uh, so with additional, uh, probably VM and gateways that just uh, migrate data, so HSM IG. Sorry, um, explode data. Um, if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Maybe. Then during the break. During the break. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.